Okay guys, this is a much more serious video than I'm used to putting up here on the channel. I don't really talk about things like this very often, if at all, honestly. This is just, this is something serious. And honestly, I would have replaced the gameplay if honestly I knew what to put behind this. You know, I just, I don't really know what else I could put. There's the phone going off, tradition continues. Anyways... Uh, if I showed video that, uh, has come out from this situation, this would be deleted off of YouTube. I might even have gotten deleted off of YouTube. I, I don't really know. So, if that's something that gets under your skin, I can hope that you forgive me. I mean, but there's just not much else I could do. Anyways... Uh, there is a huge problem going on in the country of Sudan right now, which is the third largest country in Africa. It is an issue that is not getting hardly any mainstream coverage by news outlets, uh, for the most part is being pretty suppressed, if we're being really honest, and it's just a situation that you hate to see unfold. Uh, people are losing their lives over this, and pretty much everyone in the developed world is pretty much unaware of this. Right now, there are riots going on in the country of Sudan, and there is human rights violations being committed. There is a, there's just a regime, basically, that has the country in the palm of its hand and is just doing some very horrible shit to these people who are obviously protesting very, I would say, reasonably. So, protests have been going on in the country of Sudan for days uh, because of rising prices of things like bread and the devaluation of their currency and economy. The prices of bread and other products have been rising, there have been fuel shortages in the country. These are the primary reasons as to why tens of thousands of people have began to protest the Sudanese government, calling for the leaders to step down and to leave office. So, uh, these protests are mostly targeting President al-Bashir and his regime, who has ruled the nation since the year 1989. So he's had hold of this country for nearly 30 years now, which to many of us here in the developed world seems really odd considering the fact like here in the United States, a president pretty much has four years to do his thing. You know, he can only really be president for four years. He can go for a second term and get eight total years, but it doesn't really happen all the time. So a lot of presidents do end up trying to become reelected, but oftentimes they either don't get reelected or if they do, they, that's it. I mean, after that, they're, they're done. So, 30 years is obviously a really long time. There is no real reason why anybody should ever have that much power and control for that long, you know? As for the economy of the country, it has been deteriorating for a while. A major cause of this is due to the secession of South Sudan in 2011, which hosted a lot of the oil fields that created oil, which was an export that their country was pretty dependent on, which means that their economy and their exports have suffered tremendously. They've been fighting pretty much a civil war for a, a few years now. I I mean, it's been a while. As a result of all these different problems, tens of thousands of protesters have taken to the streets across the nation of Sudan to protest the government due to the economy. At least eight people have been killed with dozens more injured over protests. Among the dead are university students, peaceful protesters, and many eyewitnesses have also said that there have been deaths and injuries caused to people who weren't even re actually in the protests. They were just in the general vicinity, maybe in a store or a market, and they were accidentally struck by gunfire at the protesters that I guess either missed or ricocheted or something. As these riots continue, I'm sure that this death toll of eight or nine, as some are reporting, will definitely rise, unfortunately. Security forces have been firing against unarmed protesters, according to the witnesses who are circumventing the internet ban in the country. Multiple outlets that have reported on this have also been saying the same thing. It seems pretty much guaranteed at this point that this is happening. Al-Bashir, who is the current president, uh, the people actually regard him pretty much as a dictator head of a regime, is currently trying to amend the nation's constitution to allow himself to run for yet another term, which like I said earlier, he and his men have been in control of this nation for nearly 30 years, and it is apparent that his entire method of really controlling is him br kind of breaking the rules. I mean, there's obviously some sort of restriction set in place that he's trying to get rid of to continue his power, but it obviously seems like the people of Sudan do not want him in office anymore, so. Protesters have accused the government of trying to suppress their freedom of expression and beliefs with force even before these protests. Internet access has been blocked nationwide for about two days since December the 20th, which is seemingly confirming what protesters have said before. Military forces have been deployed to counter the protests, but witnesses are reporting that some of the forces in the military are refusing to intervene and are actually siding with the protests instead of the regime, which is obviously some good news to see. Senators here in the United States in Washington, D.C. are calling for the removal of a Sudanese 
Sudanese diplomat for his role in supporting their government, and this is a response pretty much to these events. Which is really what's catching, I would say, the brunt of the coverage here in the United States, which is very self-absorbed of us and is very shameful, but it's unfortunately the truth. Very few media outlets here in the United States are actually reporting on this situation. As of the making of this video, the only one that I've seen is the New York Times. The BBC and a few other European outlets have reported on it, along with Al Jazeera. Otherwise, it's mostly smaller Sudanese news outlets or smaller sites that are regurgitating the information that these publications are reporting. Outlets like Fox, CNN, NBC, all these other ones uh, have yet to report on this situation, which is actually pretty much inevitably suppressing the information coming from the events. Most of the information being gathered about this is coming from the protesters themselves, along with videos, images, and more online by users circumventing the blockage of the internet. The Sudanese government is apparently going to crack down even harder on the protests, saying that they are going to deal with protesters. Unfortunately, I personally believe this means that people who are caught protesting will either be probably imprisoned for the rest of their lives or be given cruel punishments that, don't de that they really don't deserve. Uh, this also, like I, like I think, might actually end up causing people to be killed, which is awful. I mean, that, ugh, Jesus Christ, right? They've accused the protesters of being aggressive and destructive. Uh, some of them have even been accused of just taking advantage of the riots to destroy, which isn't entirely true, but does hold some credit as a few of the protests have been known to turn violent including a burning of a political office and rocks being thrown at an official's vehicle in support of the government. So that's not to say the protests were pro-government. Obviously, these were uh, attacks that were basically carried out against the government. Through the Twitter hashtags associated with these events, I've even saw recipes written in the language for the protesters on how to make Molotov cocktails and things like that. So it is somewhat true that uh, protesters have gotten violent. Obviously, that is not a reason for the government to kill innocent protesters protesters and to block the internet and suppress their right to freedom of speech and to commit, you know, other human violations, right? These are just human rights violations being committed against these people and it's awful. And incidents like this highlight a major issue for developing nations throughout the world. Regimes run many of these countries that are undeveloped or are still developing and are creating inequality, oppression, human rights violations, and resource problems. A lot of the problems with rising costs and fuel shortages fall strictly on the government here in this instance, obviously, and it seems like the government's control has obviously done plenty more harm than good. And many of us here in the first world, like in the United States and in Europe and stuff like that, we, we take what we've got for granted. Here in the United States, there have been thousands of protests in recent years, Yet not once has internet access been revoked across our country. We don't have to worry about a dictator and his men running the country for 30 years and revising the constitution to allow themselves control of the nation for the rest of their lives. And honestly, the media should be ashamed for their lack of coverage on this topic, uh, considering the immense amount of human rights civil rights, other violations and things that have been taking place, and the importance of these moments for the future of Sudan. Whether or not these men are removed from office and the government is pretty much cleansed by the people of Sudan is going to have a major impact on how the country goes going forward. Their economy is apparently in dire straits. Uh, people are obviously uneasy. They're taking to the streets. There's violence. The government is basically a regime. Obviously, the country is not in well standing right now, and this is going to be a turning point in the history of this country country if they can get things turned around with these events. On top of that, blocking access to the internet should be considered a rights violation. It suppresses the right to freedom of speech, it restricts the people's access to free information and the ability to communicate with others. It's obviously being used really to kind of block the right to protest of these people and to change the situation in their country through peaceful measures, primarily obviously some of these are not peaceful measures, but if we're being honest, a little bit of violence has to happen in order for a protest or for a revolution to really happen. We Americans know that uh, we didn't really just kind of high five the British and walk away peacefully. It, it, it costed lives, it costed blood, we had to fight an entire war against the British Empire to have our right to independence, so I think we know firsthand here in the United States, if you have any fucking idea about our country at all, that sometimes a revolution has to get a little bit bloody in order for what we consider the right thing to come out in the long run, so this is obviously all being done uh, to oppress those who aren't affiliated with the government and the regime. People should be trying to bring awareness to the situation. I mean, the more that the developed world recognizes these issues, the faster we can approach a solution to the problem. And of course, violence is always going to exist. Tyranny is always going to exist. Bad people will always exist. Standing up for human rights is critical. This is something that the developed world has to do something about. 
I'm not saying that we should just go kill everyone in Sudan, that we should just go blow the government up or anything, but we at least have to do something about the human rights violations. These people are being gunned down in the streets. These people are having their rights to freedom of speech and protest completely ripped from them, and believe it or not, these are human rights. The United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights includes the right to your own things, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, the right to public assembly, the right to democracy, the right to life, the rights no matter where you go or where you're at, the right to trial, the right to not have unfair detainment. These are human rights. Whether you believe so or not, they are listed as human rights, and they're things that we should be protecting. And of course, I don't think the protesters should be using violence. I don't think throwing Molotov cocktails into situations like this is just not going to help. It's just going to give them more of a reason to kill you, but that's that's the sticky situation. Sometimes violence is necessary. I can understand these people's perspective as they literally are watching this government that oppresses them destroy their economy, jack all the prices of all these different goods up, you know, have fuel shortages left and right, and then kill them for exercising their human rights. If you'd like to do your part in sharing the story and helping, I guess, uh, bring a little bit of light to this situation, I've listed a slew of hashtags that are being used to communicate about these protests through uh, social media. Through this communication, you will see images, videos, all kinds of different things related to the protests to kind of get a little bit more of an understanding that I obviously couldn't show you in this video. This is important, guys. This this is something that we as a world have to step in and try and stop. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Please share this video. Subscribe if you're brand new around here. I talk about all kinds of topics and things like that here on the channel. Most of them are not as serious as this, obviously. But hey, you know, you can check out a few of my other videos or something and see if it's something that you're into. Follow me on Twitter at sub to Optimus. Join the Discord down below. Thank you to my channel members for your $5 a month. Your support helps my channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus, standing with the people in Sudan, and signing out.